the beautiful scent of death and decay. But not just the scent, of course, but also the aesthetics of it. Whereas once these wonderful flowers were full of life and full of colour, now these wonderful flowers aren't full of life, but they remain full of colour and they are absolutely gorgeous. They, the, the textures are wonderful. They are so, so worth shooting. And I thought, well, let's give it a go. So I've got myself an important cup of coffee. I've got some beautiful flowers. You may not agree, but hear me out. And I have a photographic rig. What we have here is, if I can quickly take this off. I should have done this beforehand, shouldn't I? Um, little uh, square LED light from k and This is a really nice little product links down below for it lots of different modes on it we're only really going to be using the uh, the standard uh, lighting one here incredibly easy to use and i have it on i shouldn't have taken that off should i was silly of me uh, i have it on this um this magic arm and a clamp which simply clamps on to the arm of this tripod adapter which gives me quite some length as you can see so I can slide this through the center part of it I can mount at least three things on here with the the parts that are here so we've got two mounts here one and uh, one one and two I suppose um, here you can see I've got a uh, uh, a Phil world uh, F759 monitor FW759 monitor probably not going to be using that today because the screen on the camera is going to be working quite well for me but if I'm kind of working overhead or something I can't see the screen and actually the screen started playing up uh, on here the camera really is showing its signs of age uh, so uh, yeah it gives me uh, opportunities and I just plug that in using an HDMI cable and that's got um, its own battery power probably won't use that today but it is incredibly useful I've also got a couple of other uh, small square lights here which I may or may not use and also this Maiman uh, light panel here which again has got lots of different uh, options on it so I can change the color temperatures and such on that and that's um, that's 10 watts so that's that's rather nice that I'm not sure what these are I think these might be five watts and rather usefully this little desk of mine has got a hole to put the glass in so I don't have to get this terribly high so this rig is incredibly useful this central arm is by Manbelly. I'll put links uh, down below be aware of course that these are affiliate links so if you buy something you'll be helping the channel out with a uh, a bit of a kickback from the company that I'm referring to on the camera I have a 30 mil macro lens which allows me to get very close I yeah, very close I'm just gonna work on a couple of blooms I suppose blooms isn't quite the right word but there we go um, where are we let's find a focus point and we'll pull our head in a little we'll just try and get ourselves onto something and you see instantly just how easy this arm here makes this let's get that cable release just out of the way for a second uh, so I can really kind of come in and get the position I want really at the, the kind of way that I'm using this is the kind of poor man salon stand if you're not sure what a salon stand is it's a a uh, very heavy piece of photographic support equipment that's using studios uh, I suppose a kind of tripod base and normally got kind of three feet with wheels on them um, massive cast things big central column uh, and you can add kind of arms on the uh, on the central column to uh, yeah hold cameras and, and bits and bobs I mean typically just cameras and, uh, and accessories and you know, trays and such very expensive piece of equipment but effectively offering the same kind of versatility as I've got here so I can raise and, uh, and lower position of the camera on here uh, with the addition of a uh, yeah, some kind of positionable head 
I can position a camera. Um, this is a really nice head. This is my um, uh, Giotis uh, head, um, actually off of this tripod. But I'm not using this tripod out in the field so much anymore. It normally just kind of sits here with this uh, Mambly uh, arm in it. It allows me to do this kind of work really quite quickly. Uh, I have other tripods that I now tend to take out with me. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll also appreciate that a lot of the tripods I have have got a kind of articulating centre column that allows the centre column to kind of all the way up and then tilt this one. has got a bracket here that tilts so I can get the centre column going this way very much like this has. There's a disadvantage to using that in this situation because it it's not as flexible, uh, would you believe, uh, as this is. And uh, I can tilt this as well, uh, you know, I can... Yeah, you know, get it up and down like that because on most of these tripods not the K&F one which I'll leave a, rev uh, a link to the review of uh, the center column is the the up and down motion so once the center columns out the only way I can adjust up and down motion is to adjust the tilt or to adjust the legs and that's a real pain in the neck so here of course I've still got the center column so I simply release it and up and down as I need and tighten that up again. It's really simple. If you're doing macro work or if you're doing um, uh, product work, these these are really inexpensive. I really would recommend that you go and uh, get one. The other thing about it is because yeah, I've got most of the weight here, there's a, a little carabiner hook on that end so you can hang weight and counterbalance it. It's a very, very useful thing. Anyway, back to what we're doing here. Let's try and get a shot. Now, of course, this isn't as stable as a, a studio salon setup by any stretch. I mean, yeah, for instance, I'm on carpet here. You know, everything kind of moves. So you have to wait for things to settle. Even though I have a cable release on here. I think that's quite a nice shot, but I think I've got too much light at the back. I'm wondering whether I can just shade that somehow. Or if I put this on video, you can see how moving this around changes that lighting quite substantially f8 at an eighth of a second nothing appears to be moving f 8s too much way too much um, because what's happening at f8 it is that the petals are very close to us are getting uh, too much detail, too much focus detail on them. Let's try a shot at f 3.5. Now I can use my depth of field preview, but that's on the front of the camera and yeah, reaching around in these uh, conditions isn't easy. And of course I wobble everything at that time. So let's just try it there. Perhaps a bit more subtle. I'm more happy with that because I've got more depth around the stamen. I'm not sure how much depth. Quite nice, there's a couple of hairs on it. Now, I don't know whether those are actually part of the plant or whether that's something that's got in there since. Let's just whisk this away. I don't know why I'm bothering. I can't see the damn things under my, my, my own eyes. I mean, even with glasses, I won't see them. So there's no point in me trying to remove them, is there? They're just silly. So, of course, I could tinker with this particular composition for quite some time. What really works with compositions like this and why I'm using uh, this technique is because we've got the leading line uh, of a, uh, a petal kind of running in. It's incredibly soft focus. It's totally, there's no focus on it at all, but there's, the definition is there to take your eye right into the stamen. I'm concerned about the amount of detail in the petals behind the stamen and uh, I, I think they're pulling the eye a little bit too much so I'm going to try and um, get a, a, a position a method that's going to kind of stop that happen not sure how I'm going to do that just yet now for this shot I'm going to put it into a, a focus bracket and the camera will do this automatically for me. 15 shots. That's looking better. Oops, come here. Yeah. yeah, it softens out a little bit at the back, but I'm, I'm quite happy with that. 
I'll put that on the screen. Hope you do. We'll find something else to work with here. So for some variation with this posy, I thought, let's pull the curtains, let's do something dark. We're going to work with uh, this black background, turn all of the, the lights off. Long, no idea how well I'm being exposed. And I'm running two lights here. I've got one here, which is lighting and just catching the edge uh, of the glass here. And uh, the forward light on top here. Both of these are very low power. That's running at about 4%. This is running at 1%. I think when we're talking about percentages on these little lights, yeah, you know, the 1% is just relatively meaningless because there's quite a lot of light coming out of that. I mean, in a dark environment, so it's illuminating. To me, it's not 1%, but it's the same uh, on uh, this uh, light here, and it's the same on all of the others. It just looks a lot brighter than just 1%. But who am I to work that out? I don't know. What I do know is that that is quite a nice image. Yeah, it's not perfect. I'm working in a very close environment, but I am managing to get the background dark, get light on the parts that I like. There's light fall off I, I really do kind of like this image and you can see the setup is hardly any different from where we were earlier working with the uh, the macro well that's the other thing i didn't mention i've taken the macro off so this is my uh, 12 to 40 lens i do feel like i want to pull this back a touch i have to hook that leg from under there get that back here and the difficulty that I really do have here is, is, is very much space. As I pull back that little bit more, I'm catching the top of the, uh, the background there. I don't want to damage the wall. I really ought to take that to the wall, but I don't want to damage the wall. A few moments later. Maybe there. Watch. Way. Having got enough shots of the posy, I've replaced my subject with uh, this stem of dried poppy seed heads. I love the way that these these dry out, the colours in them, the blues and the the, the browns and the, yeah, there's kind of greeny colours in these. These are beautiful, beautiful things, and so structural. They they really do work as as exceptionally good subject this explains the setup first up if i had more space we'd be separating these things rather more than we are at the moment the further we get our subject away from the background the less light that the background is going to grab this is all about the inverse square law so uh, if you don't understand this very briefly a light source that moves twice as far away, double the space away from uh, the subject, becomes a quarter uh, of the intensity of it. The closer it becomes, the larger it becomes relative to the subject. Therefore, the shadows uh, uh, dissipate more, they become softer. So you'll be able to see there's hardly any shadows in this. I'll have to turn the main light off, or rather I will turn the main light off uh, in order to shoot these. But that this is principally why I've got these lights very, very close. So this one's at 1%, this one's at 6%, and that is, uh, that's intentionally filling in and lighting up under here, but also softening whatever shadow that this one is producing in the small areas underneath the uh, uh, the crown uh, of these seed heads. What I really like about these uh, uh, this particular arrangement is how it's because there's three of them we've got this uh, ability to uh, kind of separate them a bit. Now you may see that I've got a, a little crocodile clip in here which is holding them kind of in position and the angle that I've got them at just gives me the tiniest bit of space between each one so we've got this one being closest 
then that one, that one furthest back. I can almost see a kind of album cover in this. You know, if you've got a three-person band, you, you've kind of got, yeah, you, you can see, the, the like these as heads, if you like, you know, you, you've got, yeah, maybe lead singer here and uh, uh, a guitarist there and, yeah, drummers, they never really feature, do they, uh, at the back, you know, this kind of moody uh, attack. And I think I've got really a rather nice shot. I've got some images from this that I really like. Time to do one last subject, I think. Another flower. This is an anemone picked up uh, from one of the holiday cottage gardens a couple of weeks ago i did not intend it to be um like this but i put it on the dashboard of the car as i was leaving and uh, forgot it and by the time i'd remembered that i picked up this glorious little happy flower um it wasn't looking so happy anymore what i like about uh this and what's uh, really interesting about this is the way in which we've got this kink going on with the stem and with the right angle then we can uh, we can create depth with that and of course we need to bring this down rather a lot but, uh, now what i want to be careful of here as i pour this around is i want to get some space between the that the edge of the petal here and the stem there And I quite like that. Remember, if we're getting closer, then we can uh, deal with the background in a different way. What's happening with the background at the minute is we're getting the, the, the light reflected off this, uh, this curve uh, here, which we can probably deal with by simply turning off the, the main key light here. There's not a lot of gap between the stem and the background, so you just want to twist ever so slightly to create that. Yep, I think that's good. And, excuse me, we'll just turn this key light off. What I want you to take away from the video is the fact that even in death these things are just stunningly beautiful the fact that they're crinkled and dried and yeah no longer aesthetically pleasing in the way that they once were doesn't mean that they don't have a place in the kind of still life photography uh, genre because they're, they're just beautiful things uh, this carries through to man-made stuff as well so many times we'll walk past things in um in our towns and our cities and our villages and wherever we go and we'll kind of tap and say god let someone let that go and they're ignoring the absolute beauty in some of these things you know an old rotten gate uh with a you know, a rusty hinge or something yeah it's been let go but it's still got an aesthetic quality that is kind of second to none. It's unmatched. It's just because it's not new and it's not pristine doesn't mean to say it isn't interesting. And so much of the photography that I do and I kind of almost seems like preaching to a degree uh, on, on the channel is about things that aren't perfect if we only ever shoot things that are perfect then our ability to shoot things reduces dramatically because there are very few things that are perfect we need to embrace imperfection we need to embrace decay we need to look at it in a different way in death there is still absolute beauty 
I hope you like the shot and thank you very much to uh, K&F uh, for sending out uh, the little light that we've got on the arm here and to Manbley for this uh, uh, this rig. It, it's brilliant. Oh, and, and I, I forgot to mention earlier as well. It's great for storing your headphones on. <laughs> Take care. Hope you enjoy the slideshow. Bye.